What's going on guys, Dylan DeJesus here. Thank you for joining us for another video. Today we're going back to the basics and we're gonna be walking you through all the steps needed to paint in Air Force One. So we have some exciting news to share with you guys coming early spring 2020 here in Chicago. We will be having our first in-person two day long course where we'll be covering everything custom sneakers. So stay tuned for details on that. So one of the questions and topics that we get asked about most is people looking to start out customizing shoes for the first time and what are the essential products and steps that they would need to take in order to do that. And that's what we're gonna be covering in today's video. We're also gonna be giving these away. So stay tuned later in the video for details on that. Now let's go ahead and quickly touch on some of the materials that we'll be needing to do our first custom Air Force One. Our prep materials, which will include various grits of sandpaper, scotch bright pads, Angelus deglazer or acetone, and cotton balls. Then for the painting portion, we're gonna need our Angelus color of choice, my favorite product, Duller, Angelus Too Soft for painting the sock liners and dyeing our laces, and then our matte acrylic finisher. Then I'm also going to be using this five piece brush set from Angelus, which features a lot of different brushes, perfect for a project like this. Before we get into actually working on our shoe, I wanna make sure to touch on the importance of following the correct process for painting your shoes and using the right materials along the way. When I first started out customizing shoes in 2011, there really wasn't any tutorials on YouTube. I distinctly remember there was one video of a guy painting a pair of Air Force Ones and I very, very vividly remember him saying that if you don't prep your shoes, you're gonna paint them, spend all this time doing them, walk down the street, and then you're gonna have cracked shoes by the time you turn around and come home. And me being me, thinking that would never happen to me, decided that it wasn't that important for me to prep my shoes the first time around. It didn't matter if I used the right products or whatnot. It would never happen to me that my shoes would crack. As long as I paint them correctly, they'll be fine. Oh my goodness! but that is just absolutely not the case. It's very important that you follow the right steps along the way and right away start out using the right materials. Don't move into using cheap craft paints right away because they're just not gonna hold up. They're not built to last on leather. So following the right steps, using the right materials, all of these things are gonna go a long way. They're gonna give you a head start on making a great premium product. So now that that's all out of the way, let's go ahead and get things started. So we're gonna go ahead and get these unlaced right before we move into our prepping. I like to think that I have a three-step process when it comes to prepping. That's gonna usually include sanding almost any surface that I'm gonna work on. I'm gonna do some scotch bright pads to really scuff it up, and then I'm gonna clean everything up with a little bit of acetone and cotton balls. So with our sanding, I like to start things off with a 400 grit, move into a medium 800 grit, and then finish everything off with a really fine 1500 grit sandpaper. All of these sandpapers can be purchased in larger sheets and then cut up to fit on a hand detail sander, which will save you some time, a little bit less elbow grease, but we're gonna be doing all of these by hand today. So let's go ahead and start off with our 400 grit sandpaper. We're gonna be doing this on every surface that we're gonna be painting, which is essentially the entire upper of these. My recommendation is that you try to sand in a smooth circular direction. So I like to go around each shoe about three times with each of my different grits of sandpaper. You'll start to see here on some of the panels, the white leather actually starts to turn a little bit of a light gray and that is okay, but it's not a guarantee on every shoe. Each one's gonna be different. It's not even the same on every single panel that you can see here, but that is essentially something that sometimes happens once we start to really rough up the surface and give the shoe something to bite onto. So that can be a good thing for you guys. You'll also start to see on some of these panels, we have a little bit of frayed stitching, and that is something that happens from that sanding process, and it is completely okay. Sometimes you need to weigh the cost versus benefits of having some frayed stitching in a clean, durable custom, or trying to keep your stitching perfectly intact, but not scuffing up the surface enough for the paint to actually be able to bond to. So a little bit of frayed stitching is not something anybody's ever gonna notice, and I'm always gonna put the utmost priority on making sure that we're creating creating the most durable custom possible. Now let's go ahead and move on to our 800 grit sandpaper. Now we're done with our 800 grit. There's not really gonna be any major changes here at this point. We're just gonna have a few more areas where you're gonna start to see that gray peek through. 
but now we're on to our last and final 1500 grit sandpaper. All right, so now that we're done with our 1500 grit also, I'm gonna go ahead and try to show you guys some images on the screen of what these look like. Now, every single pair that you work on, even each Air Force from one pair to the other is gonna look a little bit different. So when people ask us, what should my shoes look like after I'm done with sanding? How do I know when I'm done? It's kind of hard to answer because every single pair is gonna turn out a little bit different. But as long as you know you're spending the right time, that's kind of the most important thing. So my super rough estimate is that you're gonna to wanna to spend about 10 minutes or so with each grit of sandpaper. So if we're doing three, that means we're gonna spend about 30 minutes prepping just one pair. Now we're ready to move on to our Scotch-Brite pad along with some Angelus the Glazer. This is pretty strong smelling stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on a respirator also along with a pair of gloves. If you don't have any of these, you can use any type of face mask. You'll be okay without it. But like I said, if you're doing this for a long period of time, you could experience something like lightheadedness. So this is definitely something recommended. So what I'm gonna do is place my Scotch-Brite pad right on top of my deglazer bottle, shake it up. Now we have a little bit of acetone on here also. And now we're gonna get into really scuffing these up. And this is where we're really gonna start to reveal some of that gray underneath. Now after really scuffing these up with our Scotch-Brite pad, you'll see even more of that gray is peeking underneath our leather. It's gonna be different panel to panel and that's completely okay. But now we are ready to go ahead and clean up all of that green residue left behind and any of that sandpaper residue. How we're gonna pick all that up is with a little bit of cotton ball mixed with our deglazer again also. So let's go ahead and move into that. So for scuffing with our Scotch-Brite pad and then doing our cotton ball with acetone combo, each of those steps are gonna take you about another 10 minutes or so each for one pair of shoes. So before we move into the painting of our shoes, we're gonna debut a new segment that we're gonna try to feature in a lot of our videos, Ask DCF. So what we're gonna do is take a popular question that has been asked in a recent video. All you need to do is comment your question down below, use the hashtag AskDCF, and we're gonna go ahead and try to answer some ones that we think can provide you guys a little bit more insight on all things custom sneakers. So our first question is gonna be from Nick Kessler. I'm sure you've covered this before in the past, but where would an artist have the most success selling their customizations? Do you start your own website or use a popular platform like eBay? So I think that it's always a great idea to create your own website as an artist. It gives you a lot more credibility and just makes you look a whole lot more official when anybody's searching you up on the internet. It also never hurts to try to get in front of as many eyes as humanly possible. So what I mean by that is posting on things like local Facebook shoe groups, creating your own Etsy, creating your own eBay store. Any platform you have the potential of people finding you is gonna be a great idea. You also wanna be posting all of your designs across as many social medias as possible, such is Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. All of these are gonna be great ways for you to be discovered by more people. So if you guys would like to have one of your questions answered, go ahead, comment them down below with the hashtag AskDCF. And now let's go ahead and get right back into our paint. Now we're ready for the fun part. It's time to actually go ahead and lay some paint to our shoes. Here's a little bit of a pro tip when we're working with a surface like this that is already scuffed up. Ideally, we would like to go ahead and just be able to take our final color and paint it directly onto here. But because we're working with a pretty light color, in this case, Salmon, if we go ahead and try to paint directly on top of these areas where that gray leather is peeking through, that's kind of always gonna show through our color. So what we need to do is kind of have some buildup coats in between that's really gonna help cover that up and it's gonna cut down on the total amount of coats that we're gonna be using overall because it's gonna take so many coats to just kind of cover this up. So if we do something like mixing in a little bit of light gray or white into our paint, this is something that's not only gonna cover this up, but it's just gonna help us get to our final color a little bit easier. So rather than going directly into our salmon color, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a mixture of about 50% white, 50% salmon, and go ahead and get things started with that. So here's our salmon color, and here's what our base coats color is gonna look like. It's just a lighter shade, but it's gonna help cover up some of those other areas. So as you guys can see, I'm also not using any tape at the moment. Air Force One soles are really easy to clean up in the case that you do get any paint on there. 
However, if you do want my recommended tape that I use on basically every pair of shoes, I like to use the Green Scotch 2060 tape. We will have that linked in the description if you are interested. I think a lot of other tapes that you see, kind of the stuff that you could pick up from Home Depot, the beige Scotch masking tape, you end up getting a lot of that residue left behind, especially on midsoles like Air Force One. So that's why I like that green Scotch 2060. You don't get any of that residue left behind. So to use or not use tape is just gonna be a personal preference on how comfortable you feel using and guiding a brush along the midsoles. So as you guys can see, I'm using really, really thin coats. I'm not applying a lot of paint and I'm making sure to spread it out as much as possible. It's gonna be all about thin coats. So now here is how things are looking after our first coat. You can tell we still have some of that gray leather peeking through. That's okay, not everything is gonna get covered up on our first coat, but this also tells me that we're not ready to move into our final color yet. You're not gonna cover up stuff easier with your final color, so make sure that when we have these lighter primer base coats, that's when we're really trying to cover up all of that gray scuffed up leather underneath. So we're gonna go ahead and do another one of these base coats. Also, my typical recommendation for time between coats is gonna be about 15 minutes or so. So now our base coats are looking nice and solid. We don't have a lot of any of that gray leather peeking through anymore. So this means we're ready to move into our final color. With our salmon, I'm actually gonna mix in a little bit of duller too. That's recommended at, a, at about five to 10% or so, but I like a really, really matte flat finish. So I'm actually gonna up that to about 15% or so. All right, there we go. Salmon toes looking nice and done. All of that took about six really light coats. Four to six is typically the common range for a lot of colors. Darkers are gonna be a little bit easier because we were working on a really scuffed up, grayed out surface and these took kind of that extra one to two coats to where we maybe could have had them done in the four, but six is what it ultimately ended up taking. So that's usually the sweet spot for most colors. Now we're ready to move on to our navy blue for the back half of these. Since we're going to be working with a darker color, it's not going to be as important for us to do those kind of build-up coats. However, it never hurts, but colors like navy blue, black, dark gray, those are going to cover everything up nice and easily. So as you can see, we got a little bit of our salmon color onto this white panel here, but because we're gonna be covering these up with navy blue, that's gonna cover this up real easily. So I always like to start with my tougher color first, and now I'm gonna go ahead and get into our navy blue. Same thing as before, guys. It's gonna be all about using nice, thin, light coats. You're not gonna get everything covered up in one coat. You wanna make sure to do some really nice, thin ones, and then you're just gonna have a more durable product. So as you can see, our blue looks a whole lot better after one coat than that salmon color did. Like I said, darker colors just tend to be a little bit easier to paint. So now we're just gonna go ahead and keep trucking along on these. All right, so that was four nice and easy light coats of our dark blue color. And one thing that I want you guys to take note of is this area here the piping where the blue panel is gonna meet our salmon panel. And I leave it a little bit unpainted near where the two panels meet because then I'm gonna go back with our detail brush, a little bit smaller of a brush, and just go ahead, paint that blue, all of that piping. This way I can have that clean factory edge look. Now that all of our leather panels are done, we're gonna go ahead and move into our sock liner and behind the tongue. And since we're working with the softer materials for those, what we're gonna do is take some Angelus Too Soft, 
mix that in with our color in a one to one ratio. And then we're just gonna go ahead and heat set in between coats of doing that to try to keep it as soft as possible. This does work a little bit better with an airbrush, but we're trying to show you guys that everything can be done by hand in today's video. Another alternative to a heat gun when doing a fabric painting process just like this is that you can use any household blow dryer too. It's also going to be really important that you try to make sure that you are painting every single nook and cranny on the insides of these shoes. All of these inside walls, it's a great idea to use something like popsicle sticks to go ahead and space these out and give you a little bit more room to work with to really get in there and just make sure that all of the white is covered up. Another thing that people can easily look past is all of these edges where we have our leather panel meeting our inside panel making sure we go back and touch these up, just really leaving no raw edges anywhere. So that is one more area that I'm gonna to touch up as soon as I'm finished with our sock liner and our inner walls. It only takes about two coats or so to do all of that. So now that we have our sock liners drying, we're ready to move into our Nike Air branding, which is gonna be on our tongue tag and our back tabs here. And since we're working on a navy blue surface now, I wanna do it the salmon color but I wouldn't be able to do that in one solid coat right away. It just wouldn't appear through strong enough. So what I'm gonna do is just lay down a little bit of a mist color first, do that as my first undercoat color, and then I'll be able to apply the salmon right on top of that. Two simple coats, one base color of the mist, and then move into our salmon with our toothpick, but you can also use a tiny detail brush if you feel more comfortable with that. So another great spot where our toothpick is going to come in handy is right where our panels meet the midsole. You can go ahead and scrape off any excess paint that you've got onto the midsole. Comes off super easily. It doesn't leave behind any discoloring or anything like that. So your toothpick will definitely come in handy here. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a salmon color outline around our swoosh. It's also gonna be really important to make sure that you're trying to get every single edge of this swoosh, leaving no edge behind. Painting is all wrapped up, and the last step that we took was we went ahead and dyed a pair of laces the exact shade of blue we used on this colorway. So if you're interested in seeing a full video on how you can dye a pair of laces any color, go ahead and check out the card we're gonna throw up on the screen here. All right guys, so we felt it was time to give back to our toothpick gang. So what we're gonna do is hook one of you guys up with a full Angelus starter kit. This is gonna be everything you need to get going and doing your own pair of Air Force Ones. It's gonna come with three different colors of paint, one ounce each. That's enough to do a full colorway just like this. It's also gonna come with the Easy Cleaner, a scrubbing brush, five different paint brushes, the preparer and the glazer, and your matte finisher. So what you have to do to enter is make sure you hit that subscribe button, have those post notifications turned on so you don't miss a thing. Give this video a like if you haven't already, and we're gonna be announcing the winner to this next week, so all you have to do is comment down below, hashtag toothpick gang. Now we're on to our last and final portion of Any Good Custom. Now we're gonna be talking about finishers and I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the most common ones that you'll see within our industry. So we have the Angelus Matte Finisher. Great product, it does need a little bit of duller because it's not completely matte. That's the only thing I could say about it. We have another one that's burst onto the scene recently, the Liquid Kicks Finisher. This is great stuff. This is the matte finish, and this does not need any additional deller. I've been using this for about four months or so now, I'd say, and I'm really liking how this product works. Uh, this is the Krylon Matte Finish Spray. I really like this. I've been using this for ever since I started, really. So uh, my go-to for most of the time I've been customizing has been applying the liquid matte finisher first and then hitting it with a couple coats of the Krylon Matte Spray. Then we also have Raleigh Restoration's Scratch Resistant Finisher. Now, this is a great product. However, I think that it can be misused commonly, and a lot of people think that you can paint midsoles on Air Forces. Even if it is scratch resistant, that doesn't mean that somebody can actually put their foot in here and go for a walk with these when they actually get put under force and stress, no matter what. 
midsoles are gonna crack on Air Forces, so just avoid painting them. However, this product does work really good when you're painting something like a back tab on a Jordan 3, where you're working with a really hard kind of plasticky material, you paint that with a little bit of too hard, and then you apply the scratch resistant finisher. That's where this really comes in handy. So for today's video, since we're trying to do everything just by hand, not using the airbrush, I like this product a little bit better with the airbrush. So we're gonna do the Angelus matte finisher by hand. So you really don't need a lot of matte finisher to do just one pair of shoes. So we did something maybe about a third of an ounce and then we're gonna mix about 10% or so duller directly into this mixture. You also definitely wanna make sure that you're using a clean brush anytime you're applying a finisher. You don't wanna use a brush such as this that clearly has some blue paint left behind. If you were to go ahead, dip this into your matte finisher, apply this onto your salmon toes, you're gonna to get some blue rubbed off onto there. So make sure you have a clean designated brush for your finishers. Same thing as if you were painting, you wanna do really clean, light, thin coats for this. We're gonna do about two coats total of this matte finisher. Now we're gonna go outside and apply one coat of this Krylon matte finisher spray. This is not something you wanna spray indoors. Pretty strong smelling, so go ahead outdoors with this. And we're gonna hit these with one more light coat. All right guys, you made it this far. We are now at the finish line for this pair of Air Force Ones. I love how this salmon toe colorway turned out. So I wanna to talk to you guys real quickly about some areas where custom shoes can potentially fail. And the first area is gonna be anywhere you have creases. So for example, on an Air Force One like this on the toe box. Once these shoes actually get worn and they start creasing, that is an area where some paint cracking can occur. So sometimes when you're designing, it's good to think about that on areas where a shoe might potentially fail and try to avoid painting there when possible. However, when doing a colorway such as this, it really wasn't possible for us to just leave the toe box white. We wouldn't be able to get the same effect of trying to recreate that colorway. But it's something to think about and be conscious of. So durability and longevity, these are things you always wanna be thinking about when it comes to doing a good pair of custom sneakers. Another way to compare it to is in the tattooing world, how a tattoo looks on day one isn't how it's going to look in year 10. So that's something you wanna be thinking about for your pair of custom shoes is, they look awesome on day one, but how are they gonna look a year from now? two years from now, three years from now. You wanna make sure that you're doing something that can last and it's not just gonna look good for an Instagram photo. It's something that can actually hold up to some wear and tear. All right, let's talk about some giveaway details. So a lot of you guys haven't hit that subscribe button. We've been noticing from our analytics, we need a few more of you guys to go ahead, hit that button, turn those post notifications on because we're gonna be announcing the winner to these in next week's video. All you have to do to enter is, like I said, make sure you're subscribed. Go ahead and give this video a like. We'd greatly appreciate it. And then you're going to go ahead and comment down below another famous colorway that you would like to see recreated on a pair of Air Force Ones. Whether that be another Ronnie Feig collaboration, something from the Nike SB line, or any type of colorway that you can think of, we would love to hear some things that you guys would think would translate well onto an Air Force One. These are a size eight and a half, so good luck to everybody entering. So you guys have some work to do in the comments down below, two giveaways in this video alone, and our new Ask DCF segment. Look forward to seeing you guys in that next video.